What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing my personal Magicka Dragonite PvP build and this is by far the most broken overpowered build that you will ever come across in the Elder Scrolls Online. So, without further ado guys, let's hop right into it. Welcome back guys, hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips nearly as much as I enjoyed making them. I think the 1v1 with the Emperor at the end definitely deserves a like and sub if you haven't already. How many content creators can say that they 1v1 the Imp in ESO's current state and live to tell the tale, right? Don't pat myself on the back, <laughs> no big deal. But anyways guys, uh, for real, this build does absolutely everything. I haven't showcased this build before because quite frankly I don't want people running it. Well, the patch has been out for months now, and I think it's that time to pull back the veil and expose to you guys exactly why I'm running on the DK. This works amazing in duels, battlegrounds, open world, anywhere you can possibly think of to run a Dragonite. It excels at. There is literally no weaknesses to this build. It is one of the highest, if not the highest, bursting Dragonite PvP builds you will ever have, and I absolutely love it. So, it's going to be a long one. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, so, we're going to hop right into it, okay? Character sheet wise, is everything completely unbuffed? Uh, food wise, you want Bewitch Sugar Skulls. You want the Shadow Mundus because this is going to be a very high crit damage build. This is the only way to successfully burst opponents in the current tank meta. Everyone running around with Rallying Cry and 35k health. This is the only way that I have found to burst through that health threshold. We are a vampire because you have to have the undeath passive. It is just too good to pass up until it gets nerfed, so abuse it before you lose it, guys. Now, I'm not going to bore you going over the stat sheet. It looks completely dog water. If you take a look at my recovery, it's only 628 recovery, only 880 stamina recovery. Horcrux, how can you possibly sustain on this build? Well, it all comes down to the way the build plays out. There's a lot of niche mechanics I need to go over such as our ultimate regeneration, our infused cost reductions. There's a lot to cover with the battle war passive. Now, the idea is to have 30,000 health. As long as you have 30,000 health, just toss whatever you have left into your match. Yeah, I think 30,000 health should be your bare minimum if you're in serial right now, especially if you're a solo player like myself. All of my content and builds are based around the solo players, so this will work in any scenario you can possibly imagine. But there is one very important note I want to point out on the character sheet, which is going to be our critical damage. It's currently at 53%. You can bolster this up to 63%. You do not, however, want to go over 75% because the cap is at 75% on your character sheet. I think that's 150% overall crit, maybe 175. Someone will have to correct me on that, but I know for a fact on your stat sheet, if you go over 75% crit damage, you don't get any more returns. Popping over to our sets, the very first set we'll be running is Mechanical Acuity. Now, this is a fairly complicated set to understand if you're new to the Elder Scrolls Online. Essentially, I want to summarize and paraphrase this just so it's easy to understand. Whenever you deal non-critical damage, you get a 4 second buff. Now, during that 4 seconds of Acuity, if you do any damage whatsoever, and you do not get a crit, you know, a dot, you know, a light attack, direct damage, whatever. You get another stack of acuity for another four seconds, which bolsters your critical strike chance by 20%. And this keeps happening in four second intervals upon reaching 100% crit chance. Upon reaching 100% crit chance, you have four seconds of the buff before it falls off. Meaning during that four seconds, Every single attack that you do will critically hit and every single heal that you perform will also critically heal. Now, as you can imagine, this is going to lead to a really, really high 
burst combo but the downside is that you have a very small window to pull it off and the dragonite is one of the only classes that can do this consistently because of corrosive armor when it comes to the traits and the enchantments the idea is to have as low as physical and spell penetration as possible because corrosive will give you a 100,000 physical and spell penetration so any extra points you have into spell and physical pen is virtually wasted when it comes to your damage during your combo for your main hand you'll want nern tones and for your off hand you'll want charge this is to help apply the burning stats effect or the poison stats effect and because of our combustion passive you'll get resources back thereof i always run a flame damage enchantment because this has a 50 percent chance to proc the burning stats effect okay and the second enchantment you want to run is a shock glyph this will inflict whoever you're focusing with minor vulnerability therefore increasing their damage taken by additional five percent Notice we have axes. Axes will increase your critical strike damage. We're not worried about critical strike chance. We're only worried about damage on this build. Going over the wrist, the mechanical acuity set, I have a sash. Uh, we were going to be running one light, five medium, one heavy. So our sash is well-fitted Magica. Our hands is well-fitted Magica. And your legs are well-fitted Magica. Well-fitted is by far the best trait to have on your armor currently. Impenetrable really doesn't give you much bang for your buck. And if you run sturdy, well, you really shouldn't be blocking in Cyrodiil or open world. Uh, it's much better to just roll dodge to mitigate that damage. The next set we are running is Mars Bomb. This is the 1VX set of the patch. It used to be a much more broken set than it is now. Of all of the sets in the game, this is probably the tankiest set that you can possibly run. And if you are a solo player or running in a small group, this is super nice to have. Is it overpowered? In some instances, yes. Is it underpowered? Again, in some instances, yes. This set is kind of situational based on how many people are actually focusing you. I'm running an Ice Staff, which is going to give us our block mitigation. Another reason I'm running Ice Staff is just so I can regain magic on my back bar in the source of heavy attacking. I am running Defending on this. You can run Defending or Power. They kind of perform the same with a Berserker Glyph on the back bar. By proccing this on our back bar, this is going to give us an additional 350 weapon and spell damage. With the multiplicative factors that go into play, this is more or less 500 weapon and spell damage, which will help bolster your healing as well as your damage. When it comes to the set itself, though, it has line of armor, critical, healing taken, that's great. Now, the five piece, when a negative effect is removed from you, you restore what will be 2000 health once you have everything buffed up every one second. What this means is every time someone reapplies a negative effect to you, it's going to heal you. It's on a one second cooldown. This set used to have no internal cooldown, which made it absurdly broken. So they've had to dial it back quite a bit. So anytime an effect falls off or an effect is reapplied, you're going to get healed by a thousand. In Cyrodiil, it's 2000 tooltip. Cyrodiil, everything's cut in half, right? But what makes this set really powerful is the 15 second purge effect. Now, upon reaching six negative effects, you will completely cleanse every single negative effect on you and be healed for the amount of negative effects removed. As you can imagine, this is really, really powerful, especially since we are only running this on the, our back bar. So you can actually time this cleanse out and say if you get very, very low health around 20, 25% and you need a quick burst heal. Well, if you swap to your back bar, you're going to get around a 10, 11, 12K heal every single time this purge goes off and it's absolutely phenomenal. Moving into our monster sets, we're running Blood Spawn. You need as much ultimate regeneration as possible. That is going to help carry our sustain. Now, I have had people run this exact same build on an off stream and they do struggle from what I'm told with their Magicka. If you are struggling with Magicka, I suggest running Smoked Bear Haunch to give you a little bit more recovery or perhaps switching your Mundus away from the Shadow into the Atro. Just whatever is going to suit your playstyle. I have played DK for thousands and thousands of hours, so I've pretty much min maxed the DK to a T, so I know exactly how much sustain I need and how to get it. Blood Spawn, for those you may not know, every five seconds you have a 6% chance to generate 13 ultimate and also increasing your physical and spell resistances by 3700, which is about 7 percent damage mitigation but again the selling point of this set is the ultimate regeneration we also are running a one piece training just for the health well fitted max magica on our boots and then the mythic item we're running is either sea serpent's coil or mark and ring in majesty it's entirely up to you how you want to play me personally i like to do the turn and burn method where i bait everyone into my aoe's pop crows and turn on them that way now there are different play styles of playing dk if you want to be more mobile i would suggest running marking ring and majesty here and possibly sliding race against time when we get to our skill bar here in just a moment 
So let me talk a little bit about Sea Serpent's Coil. Now this is by far one of the most overpowered mythics that you can possibly run, but the caveat is it does impose a 40% snare on you, which is very intolerable for a lot of people, but there is a way around this. So it gives you major courage, all right? That's approximately 500 weapon spell damage, but it also gives you major berserk. Guys, this is equivalent to around 15% extra damage on your tune at all times a very very overpowered mythic as long as you know how to deal with that snare this is the mythic you definitely want to run a trick to this is if you never get yourself to 100 percent health sea serpent's quill will never proc so if you're trying to kite away my rule of thumb is if you do not want to be snared by this effect have your health high but do not go to that 100% threshold, otherwise Serpent's Rebuke will proc and it'll slow you down and yada yada. So a little bit of practice, you're able to keep your health hovering around the 80% range. This will never proc. Now when you're ready to go in for your burst, you want to pop a heal, a coag to bring your health threshold up to 100%. Then Serpent's Rebuke will proc, giving you major courage and major berserk. And then that's when you go in for your burst. Another really easy mechanic to avoid this is B hopping. Essentially that's when you roll dodge at the very tail end of your roll dodge. If you press the sprint and jump, you're able to maintain your roll dodge momentum even though you are snared. For running weapon damage, the reason you want to run weapon damage on your Dragonite is because you get access to major and minor brutality. Minor brutality increases your weapon damage by 10%, major brutality is by 20%. So that's why you always want to stack into weapon damage because it will always be your highest stat. Due to the hybridization changes, that's going to be how you get the most damage. So our remaining two items are the Mars Bomb Ring. Now I do have two infused magic at cost reductions. So the idea of this build is to make your spells as cheap as possible and have as much ultimate regeneration as you possibly can. So in other words, if you are producing more resources with your battle reward passive than you're actually consuming, you theoretically have infinite sustain. And that is the ideology behind this build. And that's why I'm able to get away with such a low recovery. The Dragonite is the only class that can do this. Forgot to go over the chest. We are running a Mars heavy reinforced chest piece as well. All of our big pieces are going to have the tri stat glyphs. These are a little expensive, but it's definitely worth the investment. Hopping over into the skills and we do have a couple flex spots where you can insert whatever ability that you want to kind of suit your play style and suit how you're running your Dragonite whether you're running with friends or battlegrounds or dueling or whatever. The very first ability I want to go over is Deep Breath. Deep Breath is going is a huge heal if you get enough people on you it's going to give you a huge heal and two seconds after you hit people with it it's going to explode out dealing around 10k flame damage to everyone around you. This is especially good because it counts as direct damage and corrosive does ignore people's physical and spell resistances so any sources of direct damage that you have on your dragonite is piercing damage essentially next you want shattering rocks this is a nice undodgeable unblockable cc it's going to heal you when the effect ends as well you'll want to run flames of oblivion this is our spammable and this is what we're going to use to proc our seething fury stacks for our molten whip just so you can have a times three multiplier the entire time and do not forget when you have times three molten fury stacks that you actually increase your weapon and spell damage as well so it's very important for you to try to keep your molten your fury stacks up as much as possible because that's going to help any ongoing damage you have as well as your healing the last slot on the bar is whirling blaze now this is going to be your aoe execute this is very very important for the build now if you want something with a little bit more sustained pressure I would suggest running something like running slashes but for the sakes of this video and because i run solo i always run whirling blaze just so all those opponents who are trying to roll dodge away from me during your corrosive you can clip them and execute them that way so the ultimate we're going to use on our front bar is always going to be ferocious leap this gives us a 31,000 damage mitigation shield this also acts as a gap closer and a huge burst of damage for fleeing opponents an absolute necessity on the dragonite plus it's really really cheap Toggling over to the back bar, we're running Igneous Weapons for our major and minor brutality due to our passes. We also get minor brutality from Igneous Weapons. Next is Coagulating Blood. This is going to be our oh crap button, our huge burst heal when we need it. And there is a little trick with Coagulating Blood. So for example, when you pop Corrosive, you turn green or if your mechanical acuity set procs you turn blue that's very telegraphed to your opponent so they're just going to run away from you a good neat little trick is to just pop a coag before you go into your burst this will mask the effects of corrosive armor 
and then it will also mask the effects of mechanical acuity so your opponent will never know what you're up to. Next is Resolving Vigor. This is going to be our healing over time as well as our source of minor resolve. We have Volatile Armor. This is going to give us major resolve and this also has a flame damage component. A good rule of thumb is to if there's a lot of people around you, even if the buff is still up, it's good to apply this because of the changes this patch. It turns it to flame damage and every single flame damage source that you do has a chance to proc the burning status effect which will proc your passive combustion restoring magicka. And my favorite skill in the bar is Cinderstorm. Now Cinderstorm is a very, very heavy healing over time AoE effect. It's a 70% snare. And if you take a look guys, it costs us nothing to cast this spell. The reason this costs us nothing to cast this spell is because we have two sources of infused cost reduction on our jewelry. Cost reduction is additive in ESO and anything additive in ESO can most likely be abused. So the way this works is it is a channeled ability that you just toss on the ground and it will drain magic up per second. Well, because our cost reduction is so high, it physically drains zero magic from us. So essentially this is a free healing over time effect. And not only is it a free healing over time effect, every single time you cast this, you restore stamina due to one of our passives in the other Heart skill line, which is called Helping Hands. Whenever you cast a non-stamina Earthen Heart ability, you restore a thousand stamina. Virtually what this translates into is infinite stamina. And last but certainly not least is the bread and butter of the entire build. Our entire burst combo is based around Corrosive Armor Spin the Wind. Now Corrosive Armor essentially makes you a demigod for 12 seconds and this is where your burst is going to be absolutely the highest and we're going to cover the combo here in just a second on how you want to line all of this up. So the combo is pop Corrosive on your back bar, you're going to swap to your front bar at that point, mechanical acuity will proc. Now it is very important to note that you have to gain these acuity stacks on your front bar because that is the only bar that has a full five piece of acuity. If you, your acuity procs on your front bar and you swap to your back bar and you're backpedaling, you actually don't generate any stacks of acuity. So you have to go on the offensive when acuity procs. Now, the rule of thumb is to, once you swap to your front bar, count to four. Once you count to four, that's what you want to time your entire burst around because around the four or five second mark, you will hit that point to where you have 100% crit chance and that's when your damage is going to be at its absolute highest. So I'll just go ahead and demonstrate the burst combo. You want to try to have time to see the Fury stacks already up. So you'll want to pop your corrosive, swap to your front bar, do whatever damage. One, two, right at the two second mark, you want to use deep breath. And then that's when you want to whip and then execute. Okay. Okay. So we're going to run that back in full speed. So you're going to have all your buffs up. Every time it's three seasoning fury stacks, ideally. And pop corrosive, go to your front bar, proc acuity, 1,000, 2,000, deep breath, whip, and then spin to win. And then all of that burst is going to hit at the exact same time. And if your opponent has anything less than 30k health, this is usually a one shot. Now, when it comes to our potions, luckily guys, at the point of making this video, there is a Dragon's event going on right now where you can get Dragon's Rum and Dragon's Blood as drops through this event. The reason I'm saying this is because in order to run this build without running into sustain issues, you do have to run Miter Heroism Potions. Now, these Heroism Potions are by far the best on the Dragonite, and if you can afford them, they are going to absolutely turn your Dragonite game up. So. This essentially acts like a tri potion, but instead of giving you health back and your health recovery is going to give you minor heroism for the entire duration of the potion. Now, remember what I said at the beginning of the video, ultimate regeneration is everything on the Dragonite. That's why we're running blood spawn. And that's also why we're running these potions. So if you can afford them, definitely slap them on your Dragonite. If you cannot afford these, you will have to more than likely make up a little bit of your sustain elsewhere. Maybe run one more cost reduction jewelry. Or if you wanted to, you can use Smoked Bear Haunch. And upon using Smoked Bear Haunch, you can potentially swap one of your infused cost reductions to weapon damage to kind of compensate the damage lost by running that food. Hopping over into our champion points, we are running Fighting Finesse. This is going to increase our critical damage as well as our critical healing. Mastered Arms, this is direct damage. This is Flames of Oblivion. This is Spin to Win. This is the hits from Deep Breath. This is Leap. Uh, it doesn't affect dots, however, but we don't really use dots on this build because you have to have a burst this meta. 
using Biting Orbs because most of the abilities on our bar and our kits are AoE, and then we have Ironclad for a 6% damage mitigation against direct attacks. Going over into the blue tree, we're using Relentlessness to give us major protection after breaking free, using Pain's Refuge because this will give you a 2% damage mitigation for every 2 effects on you up to maximum 20%. If you are a 1VXer, this is absolutely essential. Using Sustained by Suffering to help compensate our recoveries. And then last but not least, we're using Fortified. If you're struggling with stamina for whatever reason, you can sack Fortified and put your points into Survival Instincts. That's entirely up to you. Nothing to really point out on the green tree other than liquid efficiency. If you are running the heroism potions, these are very, very expensive. On average, it's 8,000 gold per potion. So by running liquid efficiency, at least you have a chance to get some of that gold back. Well, that about does it for the build, guys. But before you go, before you peace out, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members. Guys, I also do a PvP top five. If you have any 1VX clips or 2VX clips or any group, x clips you want to send me there is a link to a battle form submission page in the description below and guys don't forget to follow me on twitch and twitter as well and i will be hosting tournaments before long i just need to get enough people interested in tournaments in order to host them if you are interested in tournaments whatsoever on pcna please let me know down in the comments send me your at name whisper me in games send me some mail i have a guild specific just for these dueling tournaments that i'm gonna have so please hit me up that's all I have for you today, guys. This build is going to get you a lot of hate mails. I mean, it is what it is. So hopefully you guys enjoy. And if you found any information in this video at all helpful, I would appreciate a like and sub. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm out. Peace.